Moving on to rendering settings and rendering outputs. We're going to need to optimize our render settings depending on the render size. Now unfortunately if you size your frame it does not automatically adjust the render settings. The basic elements that need to be considered are the radiance cache settings, adaptive subdivision, anti-aliasing, and displacement if you have it. One thing we can rule out for this scene is the anti-alias settings. We're not going to be changing anything except for when we do a focus render and it's going to be including the render region for the corrugated glass. Let's go on to our render settings here. By default, Moto sets it to 8 samples per pixel. We're going to increase it to 16 samples just to get it nice and sharp. And we are going to take this up to box. So the box anti-aliasing filter is the sharpest of the three, Gaussian being the softest and triangle being the one in between. Moving on to irradiance cache, we can set the ratio we can set the ratio to a pretty low setting for this uh, specific scene. First off, just to make the testing speedy, we're going to hide all the furniture from the living room and the workplace and we're going to hide the indirect lights. So all that we have left is the sunlight. Next off, let's add a material and a shader and take these all the way up above all our material. We're going to size up our render to 1920 by 1080 which is the standard full HD size and by setting our new material it keeps everything at gray and our render times are going to stay at a minimum. Let's do a render test of our current settings. Now there's a little bit off the screen that has been chopped off. It's about the same size as the information, uh, rendering information here. Now you can see our render, our radiance cache is going pretty fast and our render is going to go um, fast as well. So the, it's a reasonable time and the quality is decent. You're going to notice some splotching that will happen in the small crevices such as this, the bottom paneling here. But many, many of these artifacts are going to be invisible from, our, from the surfacing and the shadowing that we're going to have. So radiance caching is used to get decent global illumination in fractions of the time anyway. So we're faking global illumination. So we can increase the levels to clear the splotches, but because this is going to be a one-shot deal, there is no animation, most of the splotching will be invisible. Now if you do animate the camera, you can always, you can always switch on walkthrough mode. And this will tie down the radiance cache and minimize splotching or boiling. Or you can increase the radiance cache settings and that will increase your render times. And for our purposes it's not going to be necessary. Just for the sake of comparison, let's do a test render that would be similar to this one at full H, uh, 1080 HD. So this took about 34 or 35 seconds to, for it to render. If I wanted to clear out the splotches I saw at the bottom of my beams, right here and here, I would need to take, I would need to take my irradiance rays up to around 2000 and I have to decrease my rate to 0.5 and I, my ratio would go up to 10. And I'd have to probably increase my interpolation value to 3 just to clear things up. Now on the same machine for this simple render, it'll take about 45 minutes just for this one little uh, render. So turning off irradiance caching and bumping the rays to 400, if I did that, you'd have to bump the indirect, indirect rays to 400, it'll produce a faster result and it'll tain, maintain uh, the noise-free and crisp image at 20 minutes per frame. And this is for the simplest scene, no materials, no textures, no reflections, no refractions. If you add those on, you're going to have to wait a long time for this. So instead of doing that, let's take the irradiance cache down specifically for the size of the frame here. We're going to take it down to about 60. We're going to increase the rate to 5 and the ratio to 10. Let's do a test render. So I'm not going to start explaining uh, exactly what each one of those is going to be. It's in the manual. There's no reason to say it off again. Except for the way 
that I have adjusted the, these values means I want lower quality. So decreasing them would give you better quality. So as you can see here, this took around 21 seconds. Let's compare. So this is 9, number 9, at 35 seconds. And this is at 21 seconds. So we've shaved off a lot of time. You can see some splotching going at the bottom uh, and some difference here. But again, after we've added all the textures and all the shadows, honestly, you will not see a difference. One more thing is let's go to our ambient in intensity. We're going to increase this to 0.4. So usually for realism, you don't increase ambient intensity unless GI is on. Otherwise, it's going to provide a very bland washout to the image. By, by, by increasing it here with the GI on, you just get a total uh, brighten up of the whole atmosphere. Let's check save radiance cache after render, just in case I need to render something again. Let's go to... our architectural series and save this as icdayshot.lxi move down to your environment now we don't want you know the color of our environment to restrict us so we're gonna make it invisible to camera so currently it's visible take it off invisibility and take off invisible for refraction rays so the only thing that will be refracted through is through for the environment are the drapes that we had earlier and they have a, about 20 percent transparent amount and I do not want to see the color solid on them I want to see just the black and I can change that color later make sure everything is properly set up in your scene. Let's save this as shot pre-final 2. And now we'll all go on to render outputs.